car. Yeah. You just hit the, uh, hit the button on there, you should be good. Okay, we're off. Checking connection. Three, two, one. Good afternoon, elephant lovers and fans of Ivoriella. We're coming to you live from our headquarters in Westerly, Rhode Island. My name is Matt Fiano. I'm one of the co-founders of the company. Today, I have a very special guest with us. I'd like to introduce you to Frank Pope, CEO of Save the Elephants. Frank's going to be answering some questions that you guys sent in yesterday from our Instagram post. So I'd like to introduce you to Frank to say a few words, and then we can get started with some of the questions. Hello, thanks Matt, and uh, hello everyone out there. Uh, great to see you, and thanks for joining us here at uh, Ivory Ella headquarters. The enormous Ivory Ella headquarters. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here. It's my first time at the new HQ, and uh, uh, it's a real privilege for me because Ivory Ella has been uh, such a huge part of our world ever since we got that phone call from them. Uh, uh, must be a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now. Oh, because Ivory Ella is two years old. And so we should say happy birthday to Ivory Ella. Um, uh, so Ivory Ella have really, uh, they came um, storming into our lives and they've helped us do a, a, a great deal uh, for elephants. Uh, but I should say if, uh, just a couple of words about who Save the Elephants is and, and what we're doing. Um, uh, just to give you an introduction before I start answering your, your wonderful questions. So basically, we are a, a science-based conservation organization. We do we're specialized, specializing in uh, in uh, elephant cutting-edge elephant research in order to forge science-based solutions to the crisis that elephants face, both from the ivory trade and for, uh, in terms of the conflict uh, with human beings over space to live. And um, we, we operate, uh, we're based in Kenya, and we have a research center in northern Kenya, in Samburu, and another one in Savo. And uh, we, uh, we apply ourselves across the continent through, uh, through cutting edge elephant tracking, but also through our Elephant Crisis Fund, which uh, gets support out to all of the best organizations across, across Africa and across the world in order to create a, a coalition in order to take on these problems together because the problem of elephants is really too big for any one organization to, to take on on its own. Um, anyway, that's, that's basically the, the, the realm in which we operate and now, uh, Matt, I think we'll just go straight through to some questions. Great. Um, I'm really excited about these questions. Uh, they came straight from our followers on Instagram and it was a really impressive uh, group of questions, probably over 400 responses in total, so they definitely want to ask you some questions. Uh, some information. So uh, let's start with our first question. It's sent in from Gabriella underscore Rose underscore 98. What is the most special and life-changing life changing moment you guys have had through saving the elephants? Rescuing them, being able to save them in general, interacting with them, etc. Well, I can think of, um, um, I can think of many, uh, many very touching moments with, uh, with, with young elephants, with adult elephants, we've got one elephant in particular called Anwar in in Samburu, uh, where we have our research base, where we know all these elephants as individuals. And Anwar's very fond of, of vehicles, and especially our vehicles. And um, I've been in the car when he's uh, pretty much enveloped the whole vehicle with his with his trunk. And uh, those big bulls are something else when they're that close to you. And uh, when being when you're Surrounded by hot elephant breath, with elephant all around you, uh, you feel uh, you feel like a different person. You feel humble, and uh, you feel like uh, you really know your place in the world. So there are plenty of those moments. I think uh, I was. Um, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to start on a downer, but uh, uh, I was just involved in an elephant survey in in Savo, and um, we had the. Uh, uh, one of our rear seat observers spotted an elephant carcass, and we circled that carcass. And um, as we were circling, we realised it wasn't it wasn't yet dead, and this uh, this elephant was uh, was still alive, and he died while we were circling him. And that really brought home to me the urgency of of, of our work. And um, that, since that survey was uh, funded partially with with ivory elephants, uh, I think we're all part of this together. And uh, it made us realise that this is. Uh, however well we're doing against the crisis, we still have a lot of work to do. So that's the that's that's what motivates us to stop those kind of tragedies. Uh, and then um, the on the upside, we've had we've recently 
managed to uh, get, secure the arrest and extradition to the U.S. of two of the worst ivory criminals uh, that, that have yet been apprehended. And that sort of thing is, uh, is what, what makes us able to sleep at night, uh, because we know we're making some progress. Okay, our second question comes from at Allison Oddball. Um, what, how do you use the money that is donated to Save the Elephants, and how do you think that Ivriella supporting you has changed the organization? So Ivriella's support has been enormous and, uh, and has given us great freedom to explore and uh, take on projects that we wouldn't have otherwise taken on. And um, uh, I'm not going to tell you what our special project is for, for later in this year, but uh, there's, we, have a, we have a citizen science project that we're going to be launching, and uh, we, we, we very much want Ivriella supporters to help with that. But that's a, that was a big investment for us. It's a, it's, we're pioneering new ways of counting elephants, which is uh, one of the fundamentals of elephant conservation, because if we don't know how many elephants there are, uh, we can't. We don't know whether we're we're uh, succeeding or failing. If we don't know if the populations are rising or falling. So, uh, elephant survey is one of them. But critically, uh, uh, we have used Ivory Ella money to. We put a uh, brand new engine into our Cessna 185 uh, Bush Patrol plane, uh, which is one of the main parts of our work. We also use uh, Ivory Ella's money for for to cover patrolling costs in that aircraft. Um, we do a lot of uh, education uh, work with it. We've uh, built uh, teacher housing. We've secured. Um, uh, we put fences around schools to protect them from uh, protect girls' dormitories from uh, from incursions. Uh, we have um, uh, one of the main things we do is run our elephant crisis fund with Ivory Ella funds. So uh, we spend a quarter of a million dollars a year supporting our Elephant Crisis Fund, which is currently the biggest source of elephant-dedicated funds in the world. Uh, and uh, Ivoryella's money allows us to uh, secure, uh, uh, ensure that all donations to that fund go 100% to the field. So it's, it's a sort of highly geared conservation finance, if you like. And it's only because Ivoryella uh, have committed that all funds to save the elephants that come from Ivoryella are unrestricted. That gives us enormous flexibility, and that sort of flexibility is gold dust because we can jump on opportunities the moment they arise and save ourselves a lot of money in the long run as a result. Frank, just to give them some perspective, how much are, or what percentage of funds that comes in are restricted and they're earmarked for certain projects or towards certain initiatives that you guys have? For, of Ivory Ella's money? Uh, no, of, 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 of your normal donation. Of our, of yeah. our, of our normal donation, uh, I would say we are running at about 30% restricted. So about 30% of our funds is typically uh, earmarked for, for certain projects. Our, our next question comes from at K80 Roger. Where do you see yourself in the charity in five years? What goals are you guys working towards in the future? So our current, our current battle is against the ivory trade. And um, we've just been talking here at uh, Ivory Ella headquarters over lunchtime about where we are with that. And, and generally, the, uh, the the picture is uh, is pretty is pretty optimistic. We're in uh, uh, we're, we're in pretty good shape with the uh, with the Chinese government deciding they're going to ban the ivory trade and committing to do so by the end of the year. Uh, that's an enormous step forward. We've got a way to go. So I guess in five years' time, I want to see us. Um, uh, with uh, the the ivory trade no longer no longer in play, the price of ivory down to a couple of hundred dollars a kilo as a sort of background rate that's not going to inspire poaching. I think zero dollars is is probably too much to ask for. But um, uh, I think uh, if we could if we could get rid of the ivory trade in five years, I think that that would be re realistic to hope for and to dream for. And then I would hope that we're making solid progress on the bigger, more complicated challenge that faces elephants in the future, and that is competition with humans for space. And the way we're going to take that on is to use the, the, the expertise that we have in uh, tracking, and, and that's another thing that Ivoriella does for us, is supports in a big way our, our elephant tracking program. So uh, it costs us about $10,000 to track an elephant for three years, uh, and uh, we are continually working on the technology to build in sensors like the uh, like, like you've got in the phones that you're watching on uh, into the collars of elephants so that we can tell what they're up to uh, and using that technology to track where elephants are going and that will help us to link 
protected areas across Africa. We can't, we, we can't keep uh, these uh, African populations from, from growing, but what we can do is to use science to, to, to define smart ways to link protected areas so we can make a small amount of land go a long way. And that will help us keep elephants with enough space for them to, li to, to, to live while humans have enough uh, space to, to develop also. At any given time, how many elephants might you guys be tracking? Currently, we have about uh, I, I'm, I have them on my on my phone uh, as well. I've got about uh, 230 uh, elephants on uh, wow. uh, on our tracking system. Um, uh, I'd love to show you, but I, I haven't got that set up. Uh, our next question comes from at crom04. What is something that elephants can teach us humans? What could elephants teach us humans? Well, this is a really tricky one because they can teach us so much. Um, they are. Uh, if you ever get a chance to come and to come and see elephants for real, you'll uh, you'll feel that they have a very different spirit. And um, uh, I think that that sort of serenity and uh, slow thinking is something that uh, that we could learn. They're very contemplative. They they take their time over stuff, and they'll sit and they'll watch and they'll think about the decisions. And I think in today's frenetic world, we could all take a lot from that. But I think the other, the, other, the other thing to think about is that uh, uh, we rely very much on our, on our vision as a, as, a, as a creature. Humans rely on their, on their vision. Elephants rely on their smell. They're, 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 they've got the best sense of smell in the animal kingdom. So I think, uh, uh, I think that's what I, I think elephants could teach us, is, is uh, to, to smell our world a little bit more and to use all of our senses. All right. Um Let's see. Uh, next question comes from at Sarah C two thousand three. What advice would you say to a person who wants to help their favorite endangered animal like you guys have? You guys inspire me so much. Well, wow, that's a great question because I, I think the I think the, how long is a piece of string? You know, how, how much are you going to put into this? And I think you yourself won't know how much you're going to put into it until you start. So the most important thing is to start and um, start learning about your animals. So go and visit your animal in the wild. So if you like, uh, if you like wolves, go and, go, go and see wolves. Spend time with wolves. Find, find a local organization that can take you out there and see them. And by going to visit them and understanding them, you'll, you'll soon understand how you can, how you can best help them. Uh, you, could, uh, you can help them from your home, I'm sure, by, by um, uh, by donating or by getting involved in volunteer programs, but if you want to get more involved, then then you know get out there, get get to get to know your animal, and once you get to know the animal that you love, you're going to figure out how to how, how to help him. All right. Um, next question comes from Anna at Anna Gloza. Uh, what inspired you personally to start saving elephants? Well, my I came into elephants through a, a strange direction because I was a marine guy. I was a uh, I was into marine science and and my thing. I was all about whales and I loved I loved whales. And once you looked in a whale's eye, you get completely captured. And then I met uh, I met my now wife, and that's that's how I uh, first met an elephant. And my wife is a is a is a, a wonderful elephant expert who's lived her whole life with elephants, and uh, she showed me elephants in a way that. Uh, was um, uh, very very moving and, and I don't think uh, I don't think it was very difficult for me to make the leap from from a whale uh, to an elephant. They have a very similar kind of uh, aura to them, a very similar atmosphere, and I think I was similarly captured. And of course, the advantage of studying a, an elephant as opposed to a whale is that they don't keep disappearing underwater for hours at a time. All right, Frank, I have a question from, uh, from one of our viewers that's uh, watching us live right now, and it's from at Burns SRL 2015. Is the rumor about elephants going extinct within the next few years? I would assume that that would mean truth. And when you use your technology, can you tell if the elephant had died from poaching or naturally? Good question. So for, first, first of all, the... Um, the rumor about elephants going extinct in the next few years is a, is a rumor and nothing more. Uh, that came from, uh, there, were a lot of, there were a lot of statistics out there that uh, 33,000 elephants a, day, uh, a year were, were, being, were being killed and people just multiplied that out and said, well, there are 400,000, 500,000 elephants left in the, in the world. 
at 33,000 elephants a year, that means they're going to be gone in, in this many years. Well, that, those, those figures forgot the fact that elephants are getting born as well. And, and elephants are very resilient and they're able to, uh, they're able to reproduce and, um, uh, and, and do so at quite a good rate and, and therefore can withstand a certain amount of poaching. So, um, and the, the other thing to, to note is that uh, you can't just extrapolate figures and take it uh, on a straight, down, straight line down to, to extinction because one thing we've seen over and over again with elephants is as you as you um, uh, as they get hunted and pushed into smaller and smaller uh, populations they become harder and harder to kill elephants are extremely smart they're one of the smartest animals that we have the privilege of, of sharing this planet with and they don't like to be killed and they know when times get dangerous and they change their behavior they start moving at night they start hiding during the day and they start becoming very uh, hard, to, hard to get. So uh, elephants are not going to go extinct. Uh, the, the, the problem we face is that these, these elephants are uh, um, they're critical to their ecosystem. Without elephants in these ecosystems, the, the ecosystem changes um, uh, uh, and, and you, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to come back from that. So we need to keep these ecosystems intact and that means that um, by saving elephants you can save all the elephants that that live in the ecosystem with them. Um, you, we need to keep elephants alive in these ecosystems in order to defend them. And um, that's why we can't have elephants pushed into tiny corners of Africa. We need, we need to have them, uh, we need to have healthy, stable populations uh, in as wide a range as possible. Uh, we got another question from a, a viewer, um, uh, somebody's watching us live. Have you put the red dye onto the tusk? It doesn't hurt the animal and it makes the ivory non-profitable. I, I, I thought I've read that that's not actually true, but... So, so the, yeah, this is like a, a, a big internet meme. That, right, uh, yeah. A very easy way of saving the elephants. And I'd love to, uh, I'd love to actually do a little uh, 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 a presentation out there to, to show exactly how hard that would be. Basically, the only way to, to, to dye an elephant's tusk uh, down to the core, so actually you know, not just do the surface of it, but down to the core, would be to inject the pregnant female with tetracycline from the, from the moment of her pregnancy and carry on doing so. Uh, as I understand it, you'd have to do it once a year uh, through her pregnancy, and then you'd be able to come out with a green tusk. Um, but that would be fiercely expensive to do. If you, if you take, say, 400,000 elephants surviving in Africa, uh, you would, uh, in order to do that, you'd, you'd have to put out um, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, and with hundreds of millions of dollars, we sec could secure them from uh, from poachers with anti-poaching units and and so on. Uh, it's it's uh, it's just impractical, I think, is the is the main issue with the with the um, uh, with the dying. Uh, you would have to immobilize every elephant, and like I say, it costs us ten thousand dollars to track an elephant. A large part of that cost is is the operation to immobilize the elephant, and you'd have to do that to every single elephant, and then do it again in 10 years' time when you've got a new load of elephants. It's just not as simple as it looks on the meme. You know, if you've got a, yeah, it's possible to do to your elephant in the zoo, but not, not in the wild. Okay, last question we have um, comes from at J.E. Hall 94, and they ask, what would you like us to know about Ivoryella? I think the the main the main thing I'd like you to know about Ivoryella is that this is a this is a, a company that um, uh, is um, I think a, a, a thought leader and it's it's thinking it's thinking and um, it's practicing what it preaches. This is how how all companies should operate in the future. They they are a company with a cause, and unlike many of the scam companies out there that that are that are claiming to doing things for the environment, Ivoryella commit to. Uh, a percentage of their population, a, a set percentage of their profits, um, coming to to uh, save the elephants, and they're delivering it and making a huge difference on the ground. Uh, there aren't many organisations out there that can actually claim such a tight linkage between the products they sell and and the difference on the ground. So uh, I would uh, I would urge you we're gonna we're gonna start really communicating the the, the sort of things that the Ivoryella are able to do for us, but but putting our aircraft in the sky. Uh, getting all these kids educated 
and uh, tracking all these elephants for conservation. These are huge achievements and they don't come cheap. So Ivory Ella are a company with, with heart and we fully endorse them. And um, every time you buy, you can feel like you're, uh, you're doing your bit to save elephants. So um, uh, I, I can't think of a more win-win uh, win -win situation. And um, uh, if only all companies could be like Ivory Ella. Frank, we really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for the kind words. Uh, we look forward to sending another team out to see you this, uh, this summer, and uh, we look forward to your visit again next year when you're in the States. Great. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Ivory Ella, and thank you, uh, everyone here, and thank all of you, and thanks for, thanks for listening. Thank you for being here, and um, buy a T-shirt. Help <laughs> save elephants.